Full Body Frequency, and I'm Laura Ranks, your host. My guest today is Pam Luck. She is the founder of Ember and Ace, an athletic wear brand for plus-size kids, or PSKs. I love that. Not only did she grow up plus-size, but she played sports and experienced firsthand the importance of having active wear to fit her body. Pam Luck, welcome to Full Body Frequency. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Good, good. I'm, I'm excited to have you. First thing first, though, Ember and Ace, what's the genesis behind the concept and the name? Okay, so I'll start with the name because it's one of the hardest things to do when you start a business and people talk about it is because you have to come up with a name that's not already being used and you have to get a URL, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, you got to have a website. So I spent a lot of time in my journal for like days trying to figure out what it was going to be. And so it ended up being a play on the word embrace. Um, so I said, embrace Ember and Ace. Cause I also have a thing about weird spelling of words. <laughs> I'm like, can I please just spell them normally? And so it came from that. It's the idea that I want these kids to embrace who they are, where they are. You don't have to change your body. You don't have to shrink your body. Um, so that's sort of where the name came from. And the idea to do all of this started from a couple of things. I grew up plus size, as you mentioned. And by the time I was in high school playing soccer, I had to go to the men's section mm. to try and find, you know, I was a goalkeeper, so it was shirt and pants that would fit. And let me tell you, at that age, it's not super fun <laughs> to go to the men's section. Um, and they never fit right in the chest, right? Because right. they're not cut for female bodies so so it, it's a tough experience you know when you're a teenager and so you fast forward 30 plus years and I have a teenager now who loves dance and we struggle to find leotards mm. and so I said how is this still a problem it's been 30 years since you know and we've made all these advances and how you can shop and where you can shop and what you can mm -hmm. buy except they still haven't expanded the size ranges for kids I think, you know, and I got to a point in my life where I'm, you know, older now and I sort of decided to take the risk and start this business and fumble through it and figure it out. It has been a journey. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit and say we have a lot in common. Both of us, we attended college on the East Coast, mm -hmm. live in the Bay Area. I love the Bay Area. <laughs> Clearly, we're both plus size and certainly we are both frustrated with the lack of clothing option for us as plus size children, um, but we were also plus size child athletes. Uh, I played tennis, I swam, I danced, I understand the leotard problem right there. Mm -hmm. And I was a cheerleader as an athlete. Beyond soccer, were there any other activities that got you moving in your plus size body? I mean, soccer and dance, at least in the fall, I was fully booked <laughs> mm -hmm. all the way through soccer season. And then I think in the spring, I also grew up a little bit out rural in sort of a, a farm community outside mm. of Rochester, New York. So I rode my bike okay. a ton. Okay. It was the kind of place where you couldn't do anything unless you had mobility. Like get, once you learn how to ride a bike, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I can get to the, the store downtown or I can mm -hmm. <laughs> go see my friends. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time on my bike and then the winters are rough. So there's not much to do um, for three months of the year. But it was just a lot of, you know, and I had two sisters to so just run around making trouble. <laughs> <laughs> making trouble is always a good thing. So you mentioned that it's definitely more difficult to secure athletic clothing for plus size bodies. Um, so <laughs> how many oversized adult t-shirts did you rock? Oh my God. <laughs> this is just an aside. I'm always curious about that. Cause I, look I at mean, my photos. they're like, I think it's interesting. Cause it's like, it's one of your only choices. So you're like, you know, I'm going to wear it, but I mean, like, and then you can mess around if you're feeling, you know, maybe I'll just cut it a little bit shorter. So it's not all the way to my, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then you're opening the door to like, you know, jag the edges and stuff. I mean, that was that, that's it. It's enormous adult size shirt that you're swimming in. Right. Cause it's either, it's going to be too tight or it's this. Right. And then the, the str bigger struggle was, you know, you could always sort of make it work with oversized t-shirts, but what do you do about shorts and like, mm -hmm. what did you do about your cheerleading skirts? Well, first of all, I wore an oversized t-shirt and shorts. It was, this is when I was a kid kid. This is not, uh, okay. 
This right. was a summer program and I learned the fundamentals of cheerleading. I cheered, I think at one point I cheered for a bitty basketball team, all the things, but it was all oversized. It mm -hmm. was somebody else's mm -hmm. fit. And the issue with that, as you know, is that how do you move? You don't move as comfortably or confidently if your clothes don't fit you, right. whether, you know, whether they're too tight or too big. So yeah, uh, not a good place to be for sure. No. For sure. If you've just tuned in, you're listening to Full Body Frequency. My guest today is Pam Luck, the founder of Ember and Ace, an athletic wear line made exclusively for plus size kids with a focus on comfort and performance, unlike oversized t-shirts. There we go. <laughs> so Pam, are you old enough to remember the pretty plus line that was sold at Sears? When was that? Um, it was in the eighties. Was it in the eighties? Yeah. See, I'm, yeah, I'm Gen X. I was born in, in 72. So it doesn't, I don't remember it, but I feel like it's like, because I did grow up in a small town, there weren't many shopping options i do remember the giant jc penny catalog and okay. trying to like dig through that and find things but so that the sears line does not ring a bell for me okay well the reason why i'm saying this to you is because it was a breakthrough line for plus size girls and there was something for boys husky something Ugh. or other terrible mm -hmm. name right so believe you me i manifested those mix and match clothes from the catalog into my closet <laughs> you know because i could finally wear stylish clothes like my cousins and the reason why i mentioned pretty plus is that because you've created ember and ace this wonderful four-piece athletic line that lives between pretty plus and donna karen's seven easy pieces like those collections, mm -hmm. uh, the athletic clothing in your line is foundational, it's functional, and each piece builds upon the other. And also the pieces come in a variety of colors. So the question is why four specific pieces or why the four specific pieces and how do they connect to one another and the plus size athletic experience? Well, I mean, I'll start with saying the focus was absolutely going to be limited for athletic wear for this first line. Um, and that was in part just trying to make a statement about one of the biggest areas of need and this idea that you're not allowed to use the label of athlete when you're in a bigger body. And it's so a really it's a really hard pushback against this idea that these kids don't enjoy sports and activities and that they don't move their bodies. And so the first choice was very much intentional to make it athletic wear. And, but at the same time, it's also sort of broadening this idea of what's considered athletic or what movement counts in your life mm -hmm. as sort of, you know, athletic movement. So I wanted to have pieces that would, you know, give you the same sort of benefits of that athletic wear would in terms of comfort and fit and performance and, for people that wanted to use them to play basketball or soccer or whatever. But I also wanted them to work for kids that maybe just wanted to go play in the park with their friends mm -hmm. or, you know, even just for hanging out. The idea is I think we're all so used to having clothing that doesn't fit us. Right. That mm -hmm. sort of just impacts how you carry yourself and how you move through space. And so I didn't want to say just start with a dance line, which was very narrow in its range and specific to a very small group of kids. I wanted to sort of bring all these kids in and say, even if you just want to go, you know, hang out at the park with your friends, or if you're going to go to a picnic or a family reunion or whatever you're going to do, if you're going to be outside moving around, this is for you too. Mm -hmm. So, and in terms of that's why I wanted to get three different sort of temperature appropriate pieces. So the bottoms I have the jogger, which is for, you know, cooler weather or cooler mornings. And then I have shorts obviously for warmer weather and then leggings. I feel like I just wanted to start on leggings as soon as I could, because they're the one piece where everybody's got stories about, Oh my gosh, these roll down, mm -hmm. <laughs> they roll down, mm -hmm. they roll down. And I think the other thing is all the leggings that I could find, they're so narrow and thin through the calf. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like my daughter has very muscular legs and a lot of kids have thick muscular legs. Yeah. So I wanted to have a legging because I also just felt like you couldn't find one that fit. And I also mm -hmm. wanted as much time as possible to really work through getting a good fit on that. So a lot of the thinking was around 
highly functional pieces for athletes, but also any kid will wear. And let's really see if we can get the fit right because there isn't anything that fits right. So beyond the specific fit, are there ways in which your collection function for the plus, plus size body that other lines don't? I think a lot of it does come down to fit. I mean, that's really one of the biggest areas where we're trying to stay away from that hugely oversized look that we all sort of have lived with because you're wearing something way too big. So it's getting the proportion right. And it's also the idea of, again, what's, you know, and I think particularly with kids, for example, the waist hip ratio is a little bit more in line than you see, particularly say, for example, for women in plus size, mm -hmm. where you sort of tend to see that big difference between those measurements. So a lot of it is what's going on with the age group that I'm designing for. Mm -hmm. And then, so there's a little bit of that that's just more specific to age. And then it's, what are some of the pain points for plus size kids in particular? Mm -hmm. And I will say, I also put really, really big deep pockets in everything because all of these children have their cell phones on them at all times. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> So what are the size ranges for your line? So I start sort of at the very, where most lines end, to be honest with you, which is, you know, I have a zero to four, which is, I left the X off of the tags intentionally. Mm -hmm. So it's a zero to four X for children's. So it starts sort of in that extra large, double extra large, three X and four X. Um, because most of the places that I was looking, most for kids stop it around a two X. Sometimes you can find a three but I didn't want to get into the smaller size range just because I think you start to see fit differences that happen and how you're changing the size of the items. And mm -hmm. this was also the group of kids that was the least served in terms of finding anything that fits. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we go through those sizes for now because there's a lot of considerations when you start to try and make a pattern go even larger. I have to start with a new pattern. Mm -hmm. So the hope is to sort of get feedback on fit and then sort of figure out if we want to expand the size range even larger, or even if we want to go so some pieces that I make in a smaller size, part of it, I'll be honest is, you know, I have a daughter and even just for girls shorts in a standard size range, mm -hmm. I'm like, why is the inseam on your short, like two and a half inches? <laughs> why? Why? I don't understand. Why? Why? Yeah. So even just the idea that I make roomier, longer shorts, I think would just be attractive to particularly, again, girls, because the options that they have are all so terribly, terribly short. And mm -hmm. I need pockets. Right. <laughs> girls right. need pockets. Women also need pockets. Functional. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. Are there plans to expand the line? There are. And I think, you know, I do think dancewear and swimwear is inevitable. It mm -hmm. sort of feels like that's an area of need. And the good news is there's sort of an overlap between leotards and swimwear. So if mm -hmm. I get the fit right for one, then it just becomes about, you know, fabrics and linings and getting the, the, those pieces right. Um, but they're going to, the material acts very similarly. The fit will be very similar. So, you know, I think that's always been an area that I wanted to sort of get into, but it's, you know, a little more complex than than some of the other basic pieces, but I would love to do dance wear and swimwear. And then I'd like to hear from folks about, you know, where we should go next. And it might be that above and beyond athletic wear, people are looking for the other things that cause sort of pain points in your life, like having to wear like button downs and khakis for your school concerts or Ooh. school uniforms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pain point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like absolutely. The stuff that's really just hard for parents that are just trying to get through a school year and mm -hmm. it might turn into some of those things. It's like, and again, the nice thing about athletic wear is it's a, it's a fabric with stretch. So it gives me a little room to, to work through some changes, but we'll have to sort of see, I try not to sort of dictate. I want to hear, you know, these are some of the things that I know were needs for me and, you know, my family, but what else is out there that we sort of need that I'm not seeing that comes up for folks. So, Absolutely. We'll have folks respond to us and to you uh, to of give course. their feedback. Cause it's, it's, it's a wonderful line. Absolutely. So in addition to the clothing, the line, you offer age related shopping tips for parents of plus size kids. And you even shout out other brands. Share yeah. the rationale before that. Well, I think it's, 
just lived experience. I I know how tough it is to try and find things that, you know, and you talk about it, like you want to look like the other kids that you're friends with, the other kids you go to school with. And so mm-hmm. it sort of does take this very broad approach to you have to shop all departments and you have to think creatively about can I use like the men's short or a women's short or capri pants will fit maybe full length on my kid and Mm -hmm. I know that I'm limited in terms of um, what I'm currently producing and there are people that are trying to you know make say school uniforms or other kinds of pieces that we don't offer and at the end of the day it's just tough to try and and find clothes for your kid. And I would just love to help folks be successful in that because I mean, we all know what it feels like when you're standing in, um, in a concert or in school and your pants are so tight that you want to unbutton them or you're already, Mm -hmm. you're already doing the trip that everybody uses in pregnancy, but you also use, which is the hair tie. (laughs) through the buttonhole Mm -hmm. and you know or you've got a shirt and a button down that doesn't fit quite right and that's just tough and it's really tough on kids in particular I mean I think it's tough as an adult but Mm -hmm. particularly as your kid and just trying to move through figuring out who you are and Mm -hmm. to stand there and just feel uncomfortable is it's just tough it is tough and we've both been there for sure for sure So you're listening to and perhaps even watching Full Body Frequency. My guest today is Pam Luck. She is the founder of Ember and Ace, a clothing line that is keeping your plus size child athletes in the game with clothes that move with them, not against them. Unlike all those oversized adult t-shirts that we wore as child athletes, and I will continue to rail against them my, my entire life. So Pam, your career has taken you through federal, commercial, and nonprofit sectors. You've worked in project management and IT consulting, and you have an international business and economics degree. Even with all of your experience and credentials, launching a business can be challenging and launching a clothing line even more so. What was your journey from getting Ember and Ace from the page to the stage, or in your case, from the sketches into consumer hands? It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm. (laughs) I will say, I'll be very honest. I will say having a project management background has been hugely important for me, particularly not coming from an apparel background, not knowing design and um, apparel manufacturing at all. Mm -hmm. And I have relied very heavily on that background to sort of how I approach problems and sort of try to break them down and tackle them piece by piece. I'm also very lucky that here in the Bay area, there's a entrepreneurship center in San Francisco and they have a series of courses that they offer and they offer them for some of the most common spaces that women in particular start businesses. So they have one for apparel. Part of it is how do you start to begin to understand how who the folks are in the industry that you need to connect with and all the different sort of steps along that path from starting from a sketch to a pattern, to finding fabric, Mm -hmm. to finding a factory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it's all like, I I, just tell me how to start figuring out all those things. And then you sort of slowly start to make connections with people. And I've never been afraid of saying, I don't understand this and I don't know what to do. And I'm going to ask someone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's part of it is just, it's okay to, to not know things and starting from that point and trying to, and it it was still, it was still really, um, because I think in particular, we're at a a space in apparel where we're trying to figure out a better way Mm -hmm. because how we make clothing today is not a good model. It's not good for the environment. It's not good from a waste perspective. And so I'm also caught in this shift in how we manufacture Mm -hmm. on top of being in a market that's sort of new. Like I can't use the standard rules for how you change the size of a pattern from one to the next for kids. No. Because no, no, those rules don't apply. So we're Mm -hmm. sort of in, we're in new space there Mm -hmm. as well. And so it's just, I think the thing that I didn't realize was how slow progress would be. Mm -hmm. Um, particularly because we're sort of, everything is very new. I'll give you another example, finding fit models Yeah, because it's Mm -hmm. children, you're starting to find plus size adult fit models, Mm -hmm. but 
for kids. It's tough. I even reached out for, even for photography, I reached out to agencies in Los Angeles. I'm like, I will drive down mm -hmm. if you can find me a kid who's a true plus size kid. Mm -hmm. And so everything from photography to modeling to stock images for the website to getting, you know, rules for how I'm going to change the sizes of the patterns. There's all these pieces that is very sort of new. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it just has been, progress has been slow. So I think part of it is you have to um, find a way to make it through those really slow, tough days. And I think that's the, those are the moments when I questioned what was I doing? <laughs> You're doing greater good for us all, let me tell you. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I'm really interested in your journey, besides you being a guest here, is that I don't think people really understand all the work that goes into producing plus size clothing. You can't just grade or up the size uh, based on a, what what they call a straight body or mm. a regular body or a missy body or a Ms. body. You can't do that. It doesn't work. Our curves are different. Our body shapes are so different when it comes to measurement. I remember working with a designer, won't mm -hmm. be named here. And I was the plus size liaison for this company and I walked into the room with a fit model. Her arms were the size of a Missy arm. Mm. Her body was the size of a plus size woman's body. And the issue that the company had was that they weren't getting the arms right. They were, we were getting all these complaints about they were too tight. Mm -hmm. It's challenging to find plus size models. Everybody's a different bottle, body, even if you're plus size. So there's no... It's hard to say that there's one standard body, but it's so important to kind of hit in the middle, to kind of get someplace where there's good representation of the kind of average, if I can't even, it's hard to even say that, the average plus size body, but you've mm -hmm. got to get there. And hats off to you because it's a challenge that I'm sure you're constantly working through with every single pattern, every single sample you know, with fit. And that's really important. So again, hats off to you for that. Thank you. And I will say it's, it's super tough. Like mm -hmm. it's tough to your point, like bodies are, can come in such a variety. One of the most interesting things, if you see is a picture of like, you could have a picture of four women who all wear say like a two X mm -hmm. and their bodies will look so different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. I think it's one of the biggest challenges, but I, I will say that I focused in particular on the measurements that I feel like get wrong the most. <laughs> and the first is rise. Okay. It's that, you know, how your pants or your shorts come from the crotch all the way up to the waistband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times have you tried on a pair of shorts or a pair of pants? And you're like, oh, okay. So these are going to be low rise on me. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> or no rise. <laughs> or no rise. Because we have bellies, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to accommodate for that space. And I think the other thing that makes me absolutely crazy is why do you think that when you add size in the hips and in the, the waist that you have to make them so much longer, like the pants, it seems? <laughs> I think the average American woman is maybe 5'5". Five, five. Why do I have like a 32-inch inseam? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop. Don't. It does not everything like my also in your wrists or don't get bigger at the same rate as your upper arm. So why mm -hmm. is the. It's my just, arms. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there are certain things that just and that's just lived experience, right? That's just mm -hmm. I have had so many things that have fit so poorly. The good news is I, I knew where to start. <laughs> it's a good thing. A good thing. I also think it's wonderful that you offer branded Ember and Ace t-shirts for adults, which range from an extra small to a 4X. Is that so that parents and children can have a shared experience with their clothing? It is. And it's also a way for people to be supportive, especially mm -hmm. for adults, because I do think the idea here is I want everyone to be bought into this idea. Even if you are not plus size yourself, 
Um, but I, I would, you know, the idea that you can show support for this mm -hmm. um, and let these kids know that, you know, and not everybody that has a plus size kid is plus size. And so right. it's bringing those adults in as well. And it's just, mm -hmm. it was, it's also just a quick way for you to show support for me and the brand. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's fun. And my husband's in that photo. So it's fun. All right. And we should say your daughter is one of your model is your model on the website. She is. And it's because we're back to that whole, I need a fit model. And guess what? <laughs> That's you. Here we go. There we go. There we go. So I will say this with everything that you've shared on your website in terms of the way the leggings fit and the leggings, leggings, the leggings fit <laughs> in the thigh area in terms of the band not rolling down. Um, there's some other thing, pockets, all those things. I, I want to petition you and ask you, do you have plans eventually as after you expand the line for children, will you uh, launch perhaps a plus size line for adults? I'd be curious to sort of see. I mean, I will say also that my truly petite adults can probably wear some of the sizes I have already. Um, so I'd be curious to see, um, particularly, I think, because there is such a need, isn't there? Um, mm -hmm. I'd be I'd be curious to see how much translates from what I've learned for kids that works for um, adults as well. I think a lot of it would. So that for that you have that says 26, 28. Yeah. It's not a true adult 26, 28. Okay. So there is a slight, but all the body measurements are available. So you just have mm -hmm. to check the body measurements against it. Mm -hmm. It's an expansion off of where they put children's waist and hips. So I would say it's not a true adult 26, 28, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, it's probably more closely aligned, I would say, with maybe an adult 3X. But I would encourage folks, particularly if you are petite, to mm -hmm. look at um, the body measurements and sort of see where you fit in the range because I have tried to go, like I said, much larger than you could find any largest kid size currently. Okay. Um, but I mean, I don't want to say never, but I do think... We'll have to see. That would definitely be something unexpected, but who knows? Okay. Well, until you launch your plus size adult athletic line, how can we purchase Ember and Ace for the plus size children in our lives? Right now, we are available online only on our website at emberandace.com. That's the best place to head. And of course, if there are questions or anything, I'm happy to answer those for folks. And, you know, one of my dreams as things start to um, take off is to hopefully do pop-ups. I would love to do some in-person pop-ups and sort of see around the U S and invite folks to come in in person. So that's a, it's on the vision board, let's say for maybe the next year or so. Oh, that's exciting. Looking forward to seeing more, seeing more. So Pam Luck, founder of Ember and Ace. Thank you for joining full body frequency today. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And for more information on the Ember and Ace line and Pam Luck, visit Ember and Ace. That's Ember as in brace and Ace as in the bandage. Again, that's emberandace.com. And until next time, tune into your own full body frequency where large is luscious living. <laughs> <laughs>